Hello, Lori Michelle, the Mashiach with life lesson number 16. Jealousy, Moses, Yeshua, AKA Jesus, and how to thwart redemption. This is a lesson on how to thwart world redemption and world peace. Am I going to teach you how to do that? No. I'm going to teach you how to undo that and not thwart world redemption, the opposite. To tell you how to do the opposite, I need to tell you what is thwarting world redemption now. So the first thing I'm going to do today in this lesson, which was requested of me by Hashem, the king of the universe, is to read you the commandment for thou shalt not covet, number 10. So let's do that first. And then I will go on to explain about Moses, Yeshua, and how to thwart world redemption. Are you ready? This is a very important lesson, so please stick with it. Let's share screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is read you the commandment. I'll even do a little follow the bouncing ball. You ready? You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. I'm going to stop share. And I'll get to thwarting redemption in a moment. But I'm going to first say how important it is to refuse at all costs choosing to be jealous of anyone, judging anyone for anything that they have in their life. It's deeply evil and it leads you to commit some of the most egregious, hideous sins that have ever happened on the face of the earth. And as you watch, and I hope you will watch the entire video and share this with many, this was requested for at least the past week from Hashem. Hashem wanted me to speak about jealousy, coveting, how important this lesson is. So please keep listening and pay attention and don't assume this has nothing to do with you. Before I continue and explain how awful jealousy is, I'm going to read to you the definition of thwart. I'm checking in because this is like the fifth take and I don't want to redo this. He said, I'm doing fine. I hope you're still watching. This is very important because we want world peace. So I'm going to share again and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to read to you the word thwart because it was a word that was chosen by Hashem, the king of the universe to oppose successfully, defeat the hopes or aspirations of, to run counter to, so as to effectively oppose or baffle, contravene. Stop share. Hashem says that when you're jealous or when you sin, that's what you're doing. You are thwarting world redemption and world peace. It doesn't matter, he says, if you do it just a little bit and you make it okay to just sin a little bit because, hey, we're going to fast on Yom Kippur and it'll be okay. And if you're Catholic, I think you give something up for 40 days or something like that. My friends who are Catholic did something like gave up chocolate for 40 days and they're home free and it's not that easy. Jealousy is one of the most sickening 
energies on the planet and it leads to some of the worst sins we have ever seen committed by mankind. I'm not exaggerating. Right at hello, jealousy, wishing that you had something your neighbor had and judging them whether they deserve their wealth, their good looking girlfriend, their hot looking boyfriend breaks rule number one. I am the Lord thy God, there is no other. You are making yourself judge and jury of that person next door. You're deciding what they deserve and it gets worse from there. Right at hello, you're not only breaking commandment number 10, thou shalt not covet anything of your neighbors, but you're going right to number one and you're being judgmental. And that's not okay. Why is that not okay? We come here and we incarnate and before we arrive, we have a life plan that we agreed to, whether you remember this or not, we agreed to this life plan and the objectives of our life are set. So Hashem, the king of the universe, gives every person everything they need to accomplish what they came here to do. If he gave them too much money, it could thwart, thwart, remember that word, thwart their ability to accomplish their goal. And when they cross back over, they would argue with Hashem, why did you give me that million dollars? If you didn't give me that million dollars, I would have accomplished my life plan, Hashem. That will never happen, of course, because he will never break his promise to you. He will give you everything you desire and need for what? To accomplish what you came here in the physical world to accomplish. So looking at your neighbor who has a lot more money, a lot more success, and judging whether they deserve that success or not, discounts the agreement and the judgment of the king of the universe. Conversely, your life, if you're complaining about your life, I have it so rough and she has it so easy, it's not fair. You're telling Hashem, God, the king of the universe, who is here for you, for your every need, to ensure that you accomplish everything that you came here to do. He's all about you. And when you complain, you're telling him, what kind of God are you? Could you imagine saying that to the king of the universe who does everything for you and your benefit? You can't really say that, can you, if you knew? If you knew that he was watching you right now, and I assure you he is, if you're listening to me, he's watching you right now. If you knew he was watching you right now, what would you do? He's judging you right now. Judging you? That sounds awful, doesn't it? But no, it's not. When people judge you, when they're jealous of you, it's evil. When he's judging you, he's evaluating which way are you going to go? What do you need? Whoever you are, Sally, Joe, Jane, George, whatever your name is, what do you need right now so that you will do everything possible to accomplish what you came here to do? and you will be welcomed into his world to come. If he sees you veering and doing the wrong thing, he might smack you in the head because you need it. Judge, it's wrong to judge you, not when it's him. Why, why is it okay for him to judge you and no other person? Why is it okay for him to judge every person in all the world and you have no right 
to judge any other person in the world because he is completely about us. He's all about you. He's not trying to take you down so that he feels better about himself. Hardly. He's God. He's the king. He's here to help you and guide you and ensure that you do what you need, what you desire deep down. And he's here to help you. He knows more than you do. He knows about your neighbor more than you do. And when you say something like, that's just so unfair, life is just so unfair, you can't possibly be talking about him. You can be talking about people, people who are jealous, who covet, who break commandment number 10 are completely unfair. How so? They're judging their neighbor and deciding that they're just a little too full of themselves. And I'm gonna take that person down. Now I'm going to segue into Moses. Moses, remember Moses? It's very noisy here. Listen past all the sirens. He said, yes, keep going. Moses, revered by the Jewish people as the greatest prophet that ever was. Well, he certainly is the greatest Jewish prophet in the Torah. He had the closest relationship with Hashem that has ever been known to mankind. I'll get to Yeshua, I'll get to the others. This video is only going to be hopefully 15 minutes long at most, maybe more. But let's talk about Moses. The world reveres Moses. The Christians revere Moses. The Muslims revere Moses. The greatest prophet in the Torah. Let's put it and leave it at that. The greatest prophet in the Torah, if you're not, if you're not Jewish. What happened to Moses? Does anybody remember the story of Korah? Is that breaking commandment number 10? Thou shalt not covet? I think so. Mutiny, right? What do you mean, Moses? You're taking all the best jobs for yourself. Mutiny. What happened to Korah when he went up against Moses? If you know the story, not only was he killed, but all the people who gathered around him to say thumbs up to you, Korah. Let's go after Moses and take him down. Let him know that he's not better than us. Jealousy. But let's go further than that. Jealousy. They tried to take Moses, poor Moses down in his 80s, trying so hard to help the children of Israel know Hashem. He was the closest to Hashem, share his lessons and his love for Hashem with all the Jewish people. And they belittled him and they yelled at him right till the end when he tried to get water from the rock. And I won't go into that story right now. There's a lot of debate if you've listened to me about the sin of the rock. And Moses was not allowed to enter Israel. The children of Israel abused him, were horrible to him. Many occasions, Moses went to Hashem and said, if you love me, you will just take me. He wanted to die. That's how jealous and awful the children of Israel were to Moses. Jealousy. He just said unequivocally, yes. I'm not going to debate the Torah. You may be a rabbi and you may say, you don't know Torah. And he just said, that's not so. But let's go further. Let's go to the year 2020, right now, current day. Moses was a great prophet, right? Oh, yes. 
the Jewish people would say he's the greatest prophet that ever was, the closest relationship with Hashem, the king of the universe. He was the only one known to have met with Hashem, the king of the universe, face to face. Once a year, we are commanded to remember the story of the Exodus and have a Seder, a Seder table on Passover. It's wonderful. Once a year, we have a festival called Passover and we are commanded to tell the story of the Exodus. What have the rabbis done in their infinite wisdom. They have removed all mention of Moses. You can go to any Seder table in a religious home and you will not hear the name of Moshe Rabbeinu mentioned at the Seder table. I'm smiling, but I'm crying. Why? For years, I have been asking why, and recently I saw an answer online. The rabbis were so worried about being compared to someone as righteous and wonderful as Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, and they didn't want anyone to feel diminished, low self-esteem. So they couldn't mention him at the table. This is what I read online. And you may say, well, that's a lot. Oh, no, it's not. Jealousy. I can never be as good as that. So I'm not even going to mention them at the table. You think I'm off in the weeds? Unequivocally, no. It's that jealousy and that energy of the rabbis against Moses, who unknowingly to them was Mashiach ben Yosef, the first prophesied Mashiach, Messiah, to lead the way for the second Mashiach to come and bring forward world redemption. And look how the rabbis treat Mashiach ben Yosef, Moses. They don't even utter his name when they recite the story of the Exodus at their Seder table. You might be a Christian who didn't even know that. Well, now you know. Jealousy. Jealousy. Absolutely, unequivocally, he says yes. But let's go a little further. Let's go back in time and then let's go forward and talk about how awful jealousy is and what it can cause a human being to do when they become jealous. Yeshua, Yeshua ben Yosef, also known as Jesus. Jesus, if you're Christian, maybe you've listened this long. Hashem says, he was the reincarnation of none other than Moses, 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 Moses. Yeshua ben Yosef, Jesus was the reincarnation of the greatest prophet known in the Torah, in the words of the king of the universe. What happened? What happened to the Prince of Peace known by the Christians as the Prince of Peace? Hashem just wants, he said to me, what happened? He wants me to answer. Jealousy. Thou shalt not covet. Oh no, oh no. Uh, by now, Mary, a religious Jew would listen to this. You're some sort of messianic Jew for Jesus. Oh, no, I'm not. I, I assure you, my name is Lori Michelle Leah Mendel. I'm Mashiach. I'm Jewish as Jewish can be, and I'm with Hashem. He was Mashiach ben David, 
the reincarnation of Moshe Rabbeinu. He was kind and pure love in the words of Hashem. He performed miracles, not because he could perform miracles, but Hashem performed miracles through Yeshua ben Yosef's flesh. So what did the, what did the rabbis make of it? He's stealing our Torah. He's trying to start a new religion. Jealousy. He was being loved and appreciated by masses of people and they couldn't tolerate the light. So what happened? They bludgeoned him and beat him to a pulp. You won't do that to our Torah. You won't rise above us, the rabbis. And they handed him over to the Romans to finish him off and nail him to wood like a pig on a spit. That's what jealousy does. A lot of people online I've heard question, why did he die such a gruesome death? Why, why did he get in such trouble with the rabbis and the Romans? He told the truth about his relationship with Hashem, the king of the universe. He was Mashiach. In that lifetime, Hashem said that he was his son. I explain all that in my book about who Yeshua ben Yosef was and who he was to Hashem. But he was railroaded and went through a kangaroo court, Hashem said, and convicted of something he wasn't guilty of and nailed to wood in a gruesome crucifixion because he was loved and revered by many. And people, when they see someone being elevated and appreciated and succeeding, they got to take them down at any cost. Jealousy. Jealousy activates the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, and it leads to hatred, murder, idolatry, idolatry right at hello, murder, terror. You want another example? If you're Jewish and you've listened this long, by the way, both of those prophets were Jews. How about Christians, the Holocaust? Where did that come from? Jealousy. In my lifetime as a Jew, I have been told repeatedly that the Jews are the most hated people in the world by all the world. Why? Because the world is jealous of the Jewish people. And I wasn't told that by other Jews. I was told that by Christians repeatedly. God's chosen children, a covenant with God, jealousy. Jealousy led to the Holocaust. Genocide, jealousy. Is jealousy at the center of every sin in all the world? He says, no, but jealousy is egregiously evil and has led to some of the worst sins and atrocities. He corrected me. The worst sins and atrocities known to mankind. Jealousy, the crucifixion of Mashiach, Ben David, jealousy, the Holocaust, jealousy. So how do you thwart redemption? Jealousy. People do not want Mashiach. I am his Mashiach. I don't know if I'll ever be your Mashiach, but jealousy 
prevents Mashiach from doing what Mashiach must do. Share him with you. I am the closest with him without exception in humanity. I eat, breathe, sleep, wash my hair, do everything with him the same way Moses did and Yeshua did. Look what happened to them. How do you thwart redemption? You refuse Mashiach. The last time Mashiach was murdered in a gruesome crucifixion. What's going to happen this time? So far, a lot of nothing. A lot of nothing. People listen, they peer, they speak Lashon Hara. Oh, she's just so stupid. Oh, come on. A woman, a grandma, really? Yeah, really. It's him. I'm just the peanut butter in the middle of the bread. He's one huge slice that surrounds us all, and you're the rest. And I'm supposed to bring you together with him. But I'm in the middle, monkey in the middle. And so what are you going to do? All I want to do is give you everything. Yeshua ben Yosef wanted to give everyone everything. That's all I want to do. I want this for you. I don't even want this for me. I didn't want to do this for me. The information in here was gut-wrenching to write. If you've read it, you understand why. My personal life, personal stories, being molested. Terrible things happened to me in my lifetime. I share them. I don't care. I don't care about protecting my privacy. What privacy? For what? For what? We're going to die this way. Jealousy. Animosity. Who are you to say you're the Messiah? I'm not saying it. I'm sharing the truth. He's speaking to me through me to get to you. The same way the two previous prophets tried so hard to help you. And what did you do? Korach? Yeah. You're taking all the good jobs for yourself. Give us more. We want to go back to Egypt. The year 2020. Moses who at the Seder table? Moses? And rabbis, if you call Yeshua ben Yosef J, it's mockery. What do you do when you're jealous? You mock someone. <laughs> J, <laughs> take him down. You can't tolerate how many people in this world love Yeshua ben Yosef. Moses. Can't tolerate Moses at your Seder table. Check yourselves, rabbis, if you bother to listen this far. Am I admonishing you? Yeah, I'm admonishing you. Why? Because how do you thwart redemption? You continue to ignore Mashiach. You continue to mock Mashiach. You continue to go on your way and think you know everything when you don't know much of anything right now. You know what's in your books. Do you know what's in my book? This book explains everything from all your books and ties us together in one dysfunctional family, Mishugana Mishbacha. We are one crazy family that if you don't get a clue and start picking out all of those nasty energies and sins out of yourself, you will continue to thwart redemption. And he just said, no, you won't. I think when I look at you and the world, 
it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to die. And I say this to him all the time, Hashem, it's going to blow. The dam is going to blow. They're testing missiles in Korea and Russia. We're heading to World War III. They will not listen to me. And you know what he says? Fait accompli. Redemption is fait accompli, Lori. I decided a long time ago. Good news, right? It may not be good news for you. Because fait accompli means there are going to be billions of people who are <laughs> cut off. You're not welcome. And why would you be excluded from the world to come? Why would he cut you off when that's why you were sent here in the first place? Because you're jealous. Because you're an idolater and you don't even know it. You believe in God, you believe in the prophets, you believe, you believe, but you choose the wrong thing, the wrong energy, the evil inclination. It tricks you. And how does it trick you so easily? You're jealous. Jealousy. Oh, I daven every day, three times a day. And that person has a closer connection to God. Give me a break. Yes. Repugnant, right? Please wake up. I am not doing this because I want anything other than goodness for you and for you to stop thwarting redemption, to bring that road to redemption into being, and for history to stop repeating itself. Yeshua ben Yosef was murdered because of jealousy. The Holocaust, never again, give me a break. You're all jealous. It just depends on the day and the time. Wake up, look in the mirror and find it, the way to stop thwarting redemption. Find it in yourself, a jealous thought and remove it with all your might and he will help you. And so will I, God bless you. Telling the truth, it's time. Read the book and let's talk. God bless you.